The operational effectiveness of any fighting force, particularly an air force, largely depends on the skills of its workforce as well as the availability of required platforms and equipment, especially aircraft. The number of aircraft would of course be of no value if most of these are not serviceable. Herein lies the need for an effective maintenance system that ensures platforms availability. The Nigerian Air Force, which was established in 1964 by an act of the Nigerian Parliament, grew over the years from a small air arm with very limited number of aircraft into a major air force in Africa, gradually building its aircraft holding to meet national security imperatives. However, there was a time in the history of the service when as a result of international sanctions and in some cases neglect by military administrations, there was prolonged unavailability of essential aircraft spare parts and associated equipment. This period also witnessed a decline in the in-house capacity of the service to carry out major maintenance activities. This ugly trend has however been reversed under the leadership of the current Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadi Baba Abubakar, who came into the office with a vision to reposition the Nigerian Air Force into a highly professional fighting force through capacity building initiative for effective, efficient and timely employment of air power in response to Nigeria's national security imperatives. Being very mindful that the accomplishment of this vision would not be possible without ensuring a significantly high aircraft serviceability, the Chief of the Air Staff tailored two of the key six drivers of the vision to focus on aircraft maintenance and logistics support. The key drivers are robust logistic support and maintenance culture to sustain platforms and equipment serviceability. Reinforcement of a culture of self-reliance and prudent management of resources. In line with these drivers, Nigerian Air Force has made concerted efforts to ensure serviceability of its aircraft through the deliberate building of the capacity of its engineers and technicians, while in placing facilities that enable local conduct of maintenance activities, knowing fully well that it cannot continue to depend on foreign countries and external companies to ensure an effective and efficient air force. This drive was given further impetus with the promulgation of the Presidential Executive Order No. 5, which focuses on the promotion of Nigerian content in contracts and science, engineering and technology by President Muhammad Buhari in February 2018. This has enabled the service to reactivate over 20 previously grounded aircraft, such as the Falcon 900, ATR-42, Beechcraft, Super Puma, F-7NI, EC-135, and DO-228. These also include the in-country periodic depot maintenance of Alpha Jets in Kainji, MI-35P in Port Harcourt, C-130 Hercules in Lagos and L-39ZA aircraft in Kano. The first time in the history of the service that multiple such in-country periodic depot maintenance have been conducted and of course, the first time periodic depot maintenance have been successfully conducted in-country on the C-130 Hercules fleet. The reactivation and periodic depot maintenance as well as the emplacement of robust logistics support structure have enabled the Nigerian Air Force to raise the serviceability status of its operable aircraft from about 35% in 2015 to an average of about 80% as at August 2020, all while progressively increasing local content and participation in line with the provisions of Presidential Executive Order No. 5. This documentary is aimed at giving an insight into how the Nigerian Air Force has taken steps to ensure enhanced aircraft availability through in-country periodic depot maintenance.
The in-country periodic depot maintenance on the C-130 Hercules fleet is a major feat for the Nigerian Air Force as the capacity of its personnel has been enhanced. The enabling environment created by this Executive Order 5 has made it possible for us to build substantial capacity in overhaul of certain categories of aircraft, particularly the C-130. The C-130, uh, we conducted local PDM, periodic depot maintenance in Nigeria and Ikeja. And we brought in the technical partners to conduct the exercise in Nigeria. And the whole idea is to build the capacity of technicians, our aircraft engineers, to be able to understand what it takes to maintain this category of uh, aircrafts. We have successfully done that on 917 with Sabena Technique of France. And we have also successfully conducted the second periodic depot maintenance on Nigerian Air Force 913, which was equally conducted in Ikeja. Now, the significance of this achievement uh, can best be appreciated if you look at the number of people involved in the maintenance itself. If you ferry an aircraft outside Nigeria for maintenance, probably you will have four or five people that are attached to the aircraft for them to understand what is going on and to also see what is going on. But if it is done locally in Nigeria, you are having an entire unit, such as the 631 Aircraft Maintenance Depot in Ikeja, participating in the process. The in-country periodic depot maintenance that was successfully conducted on NAV 917 and NAV 913 has built the confidence of the engineers and technicians in the unit. There are so many advantages of carrying out a depot, a periodic depot maintenance in country. First, uh, as the chief of air staff envisioned, doing an in country PDM on the C-130 helps to build capacity of our own personnel. As a nation, we strive to be independent, to be self-reliant. If we don't do in country PDM, it will be very difficult for you to achieve that target. Then when you look at during the last PDM on 913, we attached 19 of our personnel to work with the Pakistanis that did the PDM. Those 19 had their capacity enhanced. If we were to send them abroad, we would have spent so much on extra codes, we would have spent so much on etiquette, feeding of those people abroad. However, having the people coming into Nigeria, we have eliminated all those costs. There were other benefits gained from the partnership with Pakistan Air Force during the periodic depot maintenance worthy of mention. Um, benefits of the in-country in PDM, it has helped to build capacity of our technicians. You can see that um, most of the snag replications we do now, we do them confidently because this in-country PDM has helped um, apart from saving foreign exchange for the country, it has also helped build capacity of our technicians on ground. Since our people here were part of the people that did the PDM, so they have acquired more knowledge and more skills. So if any problem or any snag comes up, they probably already know what to do and how to clear those snags. Let's say mostly the equipment that were used, it might not necessarily be the test benches, but the equipment used, certain ones we've not been using here, it gave us the at least knowledge to be able to make use of it. So presently, if we are asked to carry on such things with such equipment, we should be able to carry them on. We have flown for the 913. 913 is out on a mission right now, as I'm speaking to you. And um, for the 917, since it came in June last year, we have recorded over a thousand hours on the airplane. In addition to that, because of the availability of the airplane, since the PDM, um, we have been able to train our crew, been able to roll out two captains. Recently we've uh, been assigned missions abroad, which will involve a lot of stress on the aircraft. The aircraft have flown those missions successfully and returned back to home base without any major snacks. The two C-130 Hercules aircraft, NAV 913 and 917, 
were recently employed for the airlifting of thousands of medical equipment and other materials procured by the West African Health Organization for distribution to 13 ECOWAS countries to help curb the spread of COVID-19. is the next in line for the periodic depot maintenance. Jet in the Nigerian Air Force is the aggressor on the battlefields across the country, especially in the fight against insurgency in the Northeast. The Alpha Jet is doing very well, except that, of course, uh, it's one of the uh, there are a few countries that are operating the Alpha Jet, so the production line for spare parts uh, has actually been closed. So it's very difficult to get spare parts. And one of the major problems of Alpha Jets has to do with the avionics. To this end, the leadership of the Nigerian Air Force perfects its in country periodic depot maintenance to address aircraft downtime. Reactivation work started on three, one, now four, five, five has been completed. The aircraft is back in the Northeast conducting missions. The reactivation work on remaining two is still ongoing. Periodic depot maintenance for us on the Alpha Jet uh, is a once in a lifetime experience. And that is because it happens every 13 years or after 1,600 flying hours. That's to say, quite a significant number of us will not have the privilege of actually experiencing periodic depot maintenance. So for me, it's a once-in-a-lifetime privilege, which I uh, appreciate very much. And um, as a matter of fact, it has exposed us to a lot of things. Because we've done one on Alpha Jet 455, which is currently in the field, and doing very well. We are still um, doing on NAV 465, which is just on the background, and also NAV 471. So the experience is uh, very good for us as maintenance personnel. One significant aspect of this particular periodic depot maintenance on the Alpha Jet is the enhancement of the navigational capability by upgrading the aircraft avionics. All avionics systems that are very difficult, very difficult to get the spares to repair those avionics. So what we have done now is to upgrade the avionics to modern systems. And these modern systems have spares available everywhere. You don't need to ground an aircraft because of artificial horizon, for instance. The upgrade has significant impacts on the aircraft and the pilot. You know, previously pilots had problem when they are flying in weather. You have an uh, analog system toppling over and then you lose the reliability of the readings you are getting and the feedback you get from the aircraft. But this is, this, with this avionics upgrade, these problems have been eliminated completely. So once you are in weather or you are in a situation of uh, low visibility, you have no problem, you just trust the instruments. And then the issues of uh, interference we had when you are flying with the analog system in terms of the radio systems have also been eliminated. Out of the three Alpha Jets set for the in-country periodic depot maintenance and avionics upgrade, the NAV 455 was completed and recommissioned into the service. have an aircraft that is now very reliable and safety of flight is assured for all aircrew on this machine. The aircraft is performing well as it has been deployed to northeast and for the operational capability of the aircraft it has been delivering 100%. In the bid to continue to grow the percentage of serviceable platforms in the Nigerian Air Force, one AMI-35P helicopter NAV 531 was earlier reactivated locally in Port Harcourt with assistance from foreign partners while the reactivation of another MI-35P helicopter NAV 530 was recently concluded in Port Harcourt. The two of them were grounded you know, a couple of years back but with the inception of the present administration and the need to get as many platforms as possible to support uh, operations. The reactivation work started 
for now 531 that was accomplished in 2018. Well, 530, because of lack of space, the reactivation work was uh, stunted. Or well, from last year, uh, a lot of efforts were made, and most of those spares were acquired. Since after the reactivation of the two aircraft, now 530 and now 531, the performance of the aircraft in operations have been optimum. So far, the helicopter has flown over 650 combat hours, and we've really not had any challenge as in terms of maintenance. A newly reactivated uh, machine, at the initial stage, there are those teaching problems that come with it. But after overcoming the teaching problems, the aircraft became stable and has been delivering perfectly. The reactivation and life extension program for three L39ZA aircraft were conducted in Kano for four months and resulted in the transfer of skills and expertise to Nigerian Air Force engineers and technicians. In L39, we did life extension program. Three L39 aircraft, Czech Republic, Aero Vodokodi, they came from Czechs and they were in Kano for four months and they worked hand in hand with our technicians, the technicians who what was done, how to go about it. And I believe that if we are able to do another uh, life extension program again, involving three L39s, our technicians should be able to do it next time if there's need to do that. Their presence made us to work with them hand in hand. So that gave us a wide horizon to see and to also practice our hands on the job, all the airplanes are airworthy. As is then, the unit has flown the aircraft successfully for, in different roles, as both for training of uh, SPs, student pilots, and also for operational commitment. Currently, we are deployed to Meduguri, Sokoto, and sometimes to Katsina, as well as Kaduna, on other fronts as required. So, in that regard, I would say the aircraft have performed um, incredibly well so far, so good. So, we thank God that uh, I thank the Chief of the Air Staff for that initiative to ensure this has been. Uh, it was done and then to ensure that we can operate it. This aircraft has uh, functioned effectively. Uh, most times it, re it records no snag, so once it's back from any mission, just, re just to refuel it and it's good to go for the next mission. All the reactivated aircraft have since been deployed in various operations across the country and have been adding value to Nigerian Air Force's efforts in supporting the Nigerian military operations to secure the nation. The current administration plans to sustain the conduct of in-country periodic depot maintenance on other aircraft types in the Nigerian Air Force inventory. This is not the first time that we are doing PDM on the Alpha Jet. It has been done in the past. But for the C-130, this is the first successful one. And for the L-39, this was also the first successful one, as well as the Beechcraft and the two helicopters. So I think we are we are making uh, use of this initiative to ensure that we have what it takes to really fight and secure Nigeria. And the PDM work also being done in the country has been able to uh, enable us to expand our facilities, to acquire more tools. Even as we are acquiring skills, we are expanding our workshops now. Most of the deficiencies we have made brought out and those deficiencies have been addressed in the course of the PDM work. This is the engine bay where all Alpha Jet's Lazak engine maintenance is carried on. Uh, currently, we are doing and uh, preparing engines for the PDM aircraft. We have two engine um, recovery efforts that are currently ongoing. However, there's some significant improvement in how we operate. Before now, we have to disassemble the whole engine. That takes us up to like two weeks. The essence of the assembly is to see every module. It's a modular engine, actually. It has eight modules, and the essence is for us to see the old, old eight modules, the internal members, and inspect them accordingly. You use like a week to disassemble, another week to assemble. That's some significant downtime. However, thanks to the initiative of the Chief of the Air Staff, he has provided us with a state-of-the-art video scope. What the video scope helps us do is inspect the internal members without necessarily tearing down the engine. So with the video scope, 
we can easily go into the engine, inspect the internal members, especially the blades. Our engines are highly dependent on blade performance. So we can inspect the blades, look for cuts, look for dents that can um, affect engine operation. So the videoscope helps us get a clear picture of what's really happening inside the engine without necessarily tearing down. This saves us downtime because we can do the whole videoscope in about two hours. So compared to the previous two weeks required to do a tear down and reassembly, now within two hours, we can get our engine up and running again. The availability of spare parts and maintenance tools is key to the successes recorded in the in-country periodic depot maintenance. Knowing that these uh, spare parts are military grade items, so the Nigerian Air Force in the last four and a half years was able to reform the procurement system, imbibed international best practices, and uh, through also prudent management of resources, we were able to have sufficient funds to acquire this equipment. The Nigerian Air Force has seen a marked improvement in the serviceability status in the past five years due to a number of factors. I think the most important factor that I can identify is the enabling environment created by the federal government. That's number one. Because once the enabling environment is not there, then whatever you do will not translate into anything. And that has to do specifically with the uh, leadership provided by the Commander-in-Chief and the President, uh, President Muhammad Buhari, that has made it possible for us to really have an environment that makes it easy for us to really work uh, effectively and efficiently. And that has uh, translated, of course, into additional serviceability for Air Force uh, platforms. Apart from the environment, is related to the environment, of course, is the resources. Resource allocation is very important. If you don't have the resources, there's no way you will, you will get an uh, aircraft serviceable. So the enabling environment is there. The resources might not be totally uh, adequate. Nobody gets everything he wants to, to get. But I can tell you that uh, we have been supported uh, substantially with the, with the resources that we require uh, to be able to get to where we are. And uh, I believe that with more resources, we'll even do uh, far better than what we're doing now. As the Nigerian Air Force continue to leverage on the provision of Presidential Executive Order No. 5 to build local capacity for in-country maintenance of its aircraft while also enhancing the skills of its workforce, the service will remain effective, efficient and timely in employment of air power in response to Nigeria's national security imperatives. Nigerian Air Force, willing, able, ready.